give a very warm welcome to Maddie Healy from the 1975. Hi. Hello. You right? <laughs> I know you're used to that, but for me, it's adorable. I didn't know you guys were so cute. There I am. Hi, Maddie. Hey, thanks for coming in today. Oh, thank you. It's been it's been a long time since you've actually been right here in this room. Uh, a lot has happened. Mm-hmm. When was the last time I was here? Was it two years ago? November. November two years ago. Look at that service. Um. New album, new album in the pipeline, and I hate to start off with like the hard hitting questions, but we have to know: city or united? Uh, neither of those. Two. Neither. No, I, well, I'm from Newcastle originally, yeah. and you can't really. Um, that's that's the team that you support. Oh. Where you're from, or who your dad supports, right? Gotcha. So my dad would have never let me support Man United or Man City. Tim put the hammer down. Yeah, exactly. All right, good to know. Well, it's been an exciting season. Yeah, I, to be honest, I try and when I'm on tour, I try not to follow football because it's just one thing that I don't have the time for anymore. I've got so much to do. If I spent all my time watch, the, worrying about the football, I, I would, I would spend all my time worrying about the football. <laughs> you would never sleep. Ross does that for yeah. us. So, um, well, that's good. You see Liverpool can... though. You don't watch football, but Liverpool beat Barcelona four 0 That's mental. That's like, <laughs> I can't think of an American equivalent, but. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. I love the drama. Well, you spend a lot of your, I would say, free time working on music constantly, right? You and George are mm, kind I spend of... my own... I don't really have free time anymore, but but yeah, it, it, but it's good. But it's, it's hard at the moment because like, this is like... What are we on now? Seven in a row. This seven is my row. seventh show in a row now. Wow. Seventh full headline. Like Tonight's our seventh one because we um, cancelled Austin. But then we went back like two days later. So it's, it's hard at the moment. It's good, man. Yeah, Thanks. there was I a like Chicago, so crazy cool. snowstorm, right? Yeah, and hurricanes and fucking all that kind of shit. So it's global saw... warming's happening. It's chasing us around. So. <laughs> I saw some of your really dedicated... I mean, your fans are the best in the business. They're <clears throat> Amazing, so passionate. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I saw a bunch of them got Interstate 80 tattoos that were... Because we were route. stuck on Interstate yeah. 80. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was really nice. So talk to us a little bit about the evolution of music for cars. Um, I mean, it's weird, isn't it? It's like, I just, I, I needed to do another record because um, that's kind of how I express myself. Do you know what I mean? I think there's all those, ama- there's lots of amazing artists at the moment that their form is keeping people's attention for like three minutes and they're really good at it. You know, like Drake does it countlessly and they're like kind of like single artists that create a back catalogue of material that people are emotionally invested in based on their singles whereas I don't do that like there's not really a single Mm -hmm. apart from maybe somebody else that's like really penetrated it's more being like albums with people people are more into like the whole album as as a thing so um I didn't really have a choice to if I wanted to tour for two years I had to do what I do which is make records so it's a good record like <clears throat> it's a long record at the moment um I think there's there's stuff in there that isn't in the other records you know there's, I think there's quite there's quite a lot of anger in it oh, so yeah? there's like anger in it which hasn't really been channeled in the new in the old stuff very much um there's like happiness in it I think that the, the, there's a lot of like happy sounding stuff in the 1975 but there's not really any happy songs <laughs> yeah no. there is a couple of like happy songs and well there's at least one happy song on the record so well, that's good so um where do you think the anger is coming from the um was well, frustrating isn't it it's it's a frustrating time to be alive it's um you know i think that being just being on the on the left of anything especially in art kind of on the side of like young people i think you know, mm-hmm. kind of the empowerment is designed for them, and you, we live in a world where we see, you know, progressive young voices being drowned out by regressive ideals. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and we constantly have like just a dichotomy, just a paradox of like the same day that that 
the Met, like the Met Gala happened, what was it, like yesterday or the day before? Mm-hmm. And it was the same day that Time put out that that piece. Time have done a study where they've realised that like in the next 11 years, if we keep going at the way we're going, we're going to lose 40% of like biodiversity. It's going to lose like 30% of uh, amphibians, 30% of like plant life matter. Like we're, we're in this really, really dramatic time, but we're s- because... <clears throat> the idea of like sharing one portal of information has kind of disappeared when we're, m- we're even more individual than we used to be because we have these like individual screens so we can choose to ignore things on an individual level more than we used to be able to and then obviously like the media is not it's more interested in talking about the Met Gala than they are about you know potential sure. loss of life um so it's just it's a weird time it's frustrating it's like I I think that Everybody needs to sacrifice, you know, that's what is required. It's not going to be easy. It, no no one's going to not be able to sacrifice. Like, I think I have to sacrifice stuff as an artist. Like, I'm talking about talking to Jamie about it. Like, I think for Music for Cars, we're going to sacrifice, like, chart position. And, you know, like, I've had, like, three number one albums in the UK. Um, have I? Yeah. And th- that's kind of, like, important to you as a legacy, but, like, for example, like I'd, if I wanted another number one record, I'd have to make loads of CDs or out or vinyl. And so I'm not doing that. You know, we can't keep just making plastic and saying it's my plastic's fine. <laughs> you know, so I'm going to try and create a product that's like um, essentially like a USB that you can take the music off, and then once it's off, you it's biodegradable, so you can like plant it. Wow. So hopefully, you'll get like seeds with the. USB and then once you've got the music you can plant the USB and actually turn it into something beneficial as opposed to just maybe void or or bad so I um, love that idea do you feel a responsibility to use your platform now to talk about these issues to write songs yes. to kind of encourage your fan base to do something about it yeah. does that feel like a burden I think it should be the burden of any decent artist, you know. There's no point now in like taking up so much space. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think I've been accused of like maybe uh, having a go at people about that. Do you know what I mean? Do you see that guy from like Imagine Dragons? He like him. Um, he went online quite recently and he was kind of like, everybody's like slagging off my band. Everyone's like saying that like not good enough or whatever. And he was like Billy Corgan said it and Matty from the 1975 said it. I was like, yeah, bro. Like, I didn't say that. Aww. No, it's not that. And even if I did say that, like, why do you care? Like, you're a millionaire in a huge band. Like, you, you don't go, oh, I'm going to do this. And also, can I be void of criticism? <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> but that's not the point. My point wasn't that Imagine Dragons aren't good. I don't care. Like, if you're if you're that big, if you're like the biggest alternative band in America, radio play wise, and you are saying nothing in your music. If you're just saying words, radioactive, whoa, 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 whoa. Do you know what I mean? It's like, don't, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm sure that they're like, but it's just, what's the point? Like, if you can tell me what the point is, apart from escapism, like then, and we, like, we're rubbish with like protest music nowadays as a society. Like, look at like after 9-11, like that was so hard for the country to deal with. Mm-hmm. Everybody's listening to fucking Jack Johnson and Nora Jones. Do you know what I mean? Like, because people didn't want to deal with reality. We have to deal with reality now. So I seen that guy from Imagine Dragons get up on stage the other week at Billboard Music Awards, mm-hmm. start talking about like conversion therapy and saying how it was bullshit and we needed to stop it. And I thought, there you go, good. Use your platform. I'm not going to slag you off for that. Do you know what well, I mean? He probably did it because of you. Let, uh, uh, That's yeah, your I mean, influence. good, good for him. <laughs> good for everybody. All right, um, so let's talk about the current album, brief inquiry into online relationships, which. Uh, some of these songs were written, were they recorded onto your iPhone? Is that true? Yeah, there's loads of, there's loads of shit. I think there's lots of like drums done on the iPhone. And the iPhone's amazing. Like, you c- it's a supercomputer, you know, it's like the, um, I, I think that it, it was just a record about embracing um, kind of limitations and, and kind of just, it was, it was, um, uh, the notes on a conditional form is, is is has been the weirdest one in regards to its recording because a lot of it's been done on like this studio bus and stuff like that and then oh yeah 
So um, it's kind of like most of it's been done on the road and in Los Angeles, and we've not actually been anywhere particular to make it. So it's quite it's quite interesting, but um, yeah, it's it recording. You have to really like get in the the right mindset about it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you could drive yourself mental trying to make an album that we're trying to make in the way that we're trying to make it. But I like being able to hear all of the 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 glue and you know what I mean, like all of the shit that brings it together. There's a lot of like um there's a lot of like just little moments and deconstructed ideas on notes. Um but I don't know, it's not finished yet, so uh well during a brief inquiry you were kind of battling some demons of your own during mm. the writing process, correct? Yeah, yeah, I think I was. I think the brief inquiry was just like I'd been through a lot of stuff that I'd not really spoken about and the well isn't that deep when you're talking about all of your real personal experiences, do you know what I mean? So I was kind of a bit like, well, I have to talk about this otherwise I don't have anything else to talk about. It's not like I... I think like with the hero... Like even the word heroin is like... Do you know what I mean? It's a bit like, fuck, wow. Um, so... And I think that with art and with drama and stuff like that, me doing what I do, there's always like a thing around it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and I think that I see like people talking about, the art fans talking about different eras and stuff like that. And then a fan will be like, well, I love the self-titled. That was like my era. And then another kid will be like, no, 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 because Matty was like fucked up then and you can't like that era. And it's not really the case. I mean, like, Drugs have always been a big part of my life. Like, they have, like, I've always been fascinated with them, honestly, like, intellectually, socially, culturally, um, in in writing. I've always found the... I've always found the idea of the desire to change the way that one feels a really interesting mm -hmm. thing and, and why it's so needed and why it's so... been so necessary for me. And, um... So, you know, like, I wasn't, like, on smack the whole time I was making the last two records. Like, I really wasn't. Like, I, I never used in America, for example. So, I used to, like, it was hard, but I used to, like, knock it on the head, go to America, clean up for a little bit. And then, um, so it was all right. And I was, like, 25 as well. Like, I was kind of, honestly, I was kind of into it. This is what people won't say. Mm -hmm. People will just be like, I am so bad and never you know never like i wanted to do i don't i don't do stuff i don't want to do right so i think that that's one of the things that people need to like know about drug addiction is that there is like an intellectual sickness to it mm -hmm. i did think that I, I was because i needed it i felt like maybe i was more legit because i wasn't performative i no one knew that i was using those drugs it wasn't part of my identity. That really scared me being like a performative junkie because that's like really irresponsible. But maybe the element that it was like the only thing that was my thing, like the only thing that was secret, the only thing that was actually really quite dark about me, um, you know, like I owned it. I think I liked that. Did you keep it a secret from the other guys? Yeah, for a long time. Well, I think George found me a couple of times. So he was just a bit like, bro, <laughs> Because me and George are like so close, we don't have those kind of boundaries. Yeah. Um, but yeah, drugs just like heavy drugs just make you a liar anyway. So <clears throat> it just becomes this really like anxious time of just, you know, checking your bag four times to make sure someone's not going to go and look for a lighter and find something that you don't. It's just stressful. Like, I just can't be asked for that anymore. That's one of the main reasons that I don't do it anymore because it, um, it hurts people too much and um, it's too much effort. How are you coping now? Um, I'm pretty good. I mean, I'm kind of over it. Like, <clears throat> I, I like dream about it quite a lot, but I dream more about like worrying about getting sick. So like in my dream, I've been using and I now don't have anything and I have to deal with being sick and I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh, thank fuck for that. You know? So there's those kind of things that I'm just like, yeah. And to be honest with you, thinking about like doing this shit now, like seven shows in a row and then like, 
trying to score in like Chicago by myself, like some homeless dude. I can't be asked <laughs> doing that shit anymore. You're like, it's, and I'm too famous now as well. Like, I get true. so caught. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, when I first came out of rehab, I was in London and I had a night and I was like, fuck it. I don't care. Fuck it. And I went out to go and score and um, some guy walked past me and went, all right, mate. And I went, <laughs> And I thought, yeah, like, what am I doing? Because it, not that uh, it's just like you just you just realize, like, what are you doing, man? Like, <laughs> you know, people think you're cool. You know, you are. <clears throat> <clears throat> you are if you're not like, you know, yeah, just doing fucking heroin. Well, what's the most important thing for your self in regard to your mental health right now? I not figured it out. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, I'm still an addict, you know. I, I, you know, I smoke weed like you just wouldn't believe, <laughs> and um, and I always have done. But I think that since I came out of rehab, it got better, and then it got worse. Um, I'm just trying. You know, I'm just trying to do it. I don't know. I think making records makes me really happy. You know. Um, and like I just make a lot of stuff like I feel really like I don't really have a purpose unless I'm making stuff because you know I'm I have like this really big ego but there's the really low sense of self-worth do you know what I mean so I am I'm fine like, I get it I understand the whole uh, ooh, the whole like thing on stage and stuff that's fine because it's not really me but when it comes to like really like these things when it's like really me I'm I don't really like it but um so well you're doing great thanks man thanks man <laughs> i just keep making records you know i think that there's so many this our label is really turning into this cultural phenomenon you know and this there's artists that, that like genuinely look up to me and kind of like genuinely ask me stuff and mm -hmm. i gotta give them good advice you know so i can't be i just feel like i need to set a bit of a better example um be a bit more professional because I'm really professional, like, when it comes to stuff. Like, I've never been late in my life. Wow. But I would just turn up, like, off my fucking tits sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense. Do we have a release date for the new album yet? Um, <clears throat> well, no, because I keep, like, adding stuff to it. And, like, um, no. Okay. I want it to come out in August. Um... And I don't know if anything's going to come out before it because, like, I can't really decide. And I'm making, like, three videos in, at the moment for it. So I, either they come out first or they come out on together. I think it'd be quite cool for us to drop a record. I quite like the idea of our fans just getting a record because they've never had that. They've always been like, oh, this is cool. Okay, love me. I've heard that. Uh, UDH, I've heard that. And then, you know, you don't actually sit down and experience it truly for the first time. So that would be quite cool. Well, you know they all have their notifications turned on, so they'll be the first ones to get it. You'll be the first ones Bing. to get it. What? Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's, it, it's cool. Well, yeah. we can't wait. Thanks. Um, tell us about the first song you're going to play. Um, I never really... Depends what my capo is on. Um, first song I'll play. I like this one man democracy. It's like whatever the guitar says. Yeah, to be fair, it's like if it's in tune and it's on the fourth, then I'll just keep it there. I don't wanna fuck with it. I got this guitar in Chicago. Oh, yeah? Yeah. From Chicago Music Exchange. Best guitar shop. In it's the, the world. best. That, that, yeah, I think it is the best guitar shop in the world. Yeah, that and Norm's are the best guitar shops in the world. Um, 